Clint, I saw that you emailed out the proof of notification. That's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, so that just leads us to item number three, agenda approval. Can I have a motion? I move we approve the agenda. A second. Okay. Motion by Caro, second by Luck. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, approval of previous minutes. <clears throat> Did get a chance to look over those, so thank you, Clint, for putting those together. Move for approval. Second. <laughs> Motion by Luck, second by uh, Carol. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, um, we've got several things on the agenda. I know the next one says um, to discuss, including the mission and vision statement. Um, I kind of like to wait to do that until Sean is here. I know he wanted to speak to that. So if you guys could just let me know when he arrives. I don't know if he's planning on joining virtually or in person. Um, so maybe we'll hold off on that for a minute. So I guess the next thing, um, Melissa, thank you for putting together the, the newest revised drafts of our plan. Did you have anything you wanted to share about that before we go on? No, I just think that we should talk about the finance and personnel suggestions that they had so that we can decide whether or not to include those before we move into the work plan. Definitely. I know that you had mentioned, though, that you'd added in some paragraphs. I didn't know if you wanted us to look oh. at each of those. You want to look at those now? Um, sure. um, that's fine. I think the, the main one that was different you mentioned was in chapter one. Is that correct? Right. So. Hold on now. I don't even remember what I said. So let me look at it quick. I believe that's where you referenced the comprehensive plan and that the yes. fact that this yeah. one is more internally focused. Right. So we, we had discussed um, defining the difference between a comprehensive and a strategic plan. And so I added that second paragraph there. What? The other thing that I added that I did not have direction from the committee, which is why I didn't spend a whole lot of time trying to make it sound perfect, was the last sentence in that first paragraph. I thought maybe it would be helpful for people reading this to understand what perspective we are coming from. And so basically spelling out the fact that we are we, we are purposefully limiting the scope of our strategic plan. We are purposefully being very focused on you know, getting our ducks in a row administratively, governmentally. Um, and so I didn't honestly didn't want to spend a ton of time on it in case it was something we weren't interested in doing. Um, but so this was the sentence I came up with. That's what you see in the document. Um, so Madam Chair, I, I just had a couple of comments on it. OK, can I pause you for one second, Steve? Um, uh, is it possible to turn up the volume of everybody there? I don't know if it's my computer or what, but it's just really quiet. Troy, is it quiet for you? I can hear all right, but I also have headphones in on, on remote, so I, I can't hear pretty well. Okay, well, that would probably be smart. All right, Steve, go ahead. I'll talk louder. Thank you. That's better. Okay, I, I agree with. The, the the concept the way Melissa's captured it, but one thing I, I do want to point out in the in the new paragraph, um, comprehensive plans are and Troy can speak to this, but they they're more comprehensive in the sense that we can't just say we're going to do one as the county by or by itself. It, it'll be countywide with all kinds of public meetings. It'll be um, we'll need to chase a grant to fund the, the effort that uh, Troy would do. So maybe if we change the wording just a little bit. Maybe to investigate the idea of doing. Or, or, right. or that we would um, begin the process. move to initiate one. And we won't be doing it all by ourselves. That's all I'm saying. So Steve, you're saying that it sounds presumptive to say that the county board will complete a comprehensive plan? It sounds like we're going to do it on our on our own, and and like say, Troy can type up if he wants to. Uh, 
I don't have okay. anything. Yeah, go ahead. More to add necessarily. I, I think if you're. Yeah, I think if you're uncertain, if you're going to do it, maybe temper the language, but. Um, grant funding for those plans are tough to come across. Uh, they've been required. It's kind of an unfunded mandate at this point. Uh, that said, I, I think the paragraph is strong. You know, you, the state lays out things you are required to look at, but you don't have to spend lots of time on any of them. If you don't have a big issue, you can touch on and move on. So, uh, to, to Steve's other point, you know, we've done or are doing comp planning in Lone Rock, Richmond, Boaz. Uh, we've been engaged in Casanova and Yuba to some degree. So, we, we, if we if we support you on this or work with you on that, we're not going to be starting from scratch. So, I think there's a lot of work that's been done to inform some of this, with the exception of township townships. But anyhow, what am I rambling on about? I think the language is strong. I guess unless you want to temper that first sentence, where you're fairly committed to 2024. It's a minor point. I I just wanted wanted to make sure we we recognize that. I think it's a fair point. I mean, we don't want to, we don't want, I personally don't feel like we want to commit to anything in this plan that we don't feel like we can at least work on following through. So if you, I guess I can see the point of maybe adjusting the language of that first sentence in the second paragraph. Um, yes, go ahead, Melissa. Um, so I disagree a little bit with that statement only in that I think it's okay if we don't meet every single strategic goal that we have, but if we put it in here with strong language, will that motivate us to make sure that we do get it done or do get working on it? And maybe we won't complete it, but you know, having this strong language in there, will that make us more likely to make progress on it than, than softening the tone and being like, well, we didn't really say we were going to do it, so we don't really, you know, it takes the pressure off is, is my only concern with softening it. I agree with that. I'd like for us to be, uh, 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 I guess you'd say aggressive, but maybe instead of saying county board, just saying the county. That's true. That wouldn't, then we could encompass whoever we need to in order to complete. Right. I think that was a little bit of my hesitancy is that, you know, we haven't yet sent this forward and we're speaking on behalf of the county board with that sentence. And as Steve was mentioning, it's going to take a lot more. Um, players than just that as well. So are you comfortable with changing county board to the county will complete a comprehensive plan by 2024? I mean, yeah, I guess I didn't fully think about, you know, Troy, you mentioned grant funding. <clears throat> I guess um, based on what, because Melissa, it looks like you've done a little bit more research into this as well. Do you feel that that is feasible for us to investigate, begin, and work on in that time frame? Well, we also have committed to doing a capital facilities investment plan, but I think we're further along in that process because our administrator has had that on his radar for since you started, the day you started. Yeah, we're, we have traction on that type of a project. I, I guess I would offer. Um, when the plan here is complete, it's adopted in a resolution. The structure of this body is to continue on and, and, and review this. I think I'm like a quarterly type of a basis. So in having language on there that is aggressive and we will have this complete by the 2025, 2024. Um, does that push things to try to get everything lined up for it? It certainly does. But at the same time, as we march forward with some of our other initiatives, it doesn't mean that we can't change this document either. So if that's something that is important and something that we should, hey, let's really consider putting this to the forefront. I, I, I can appreciate that and it's um, it, things can adjust yet past that. So rather than trying to wordsmith the exact intent on it, if it's if it's important to you folks and it becomes important to the county board and they adopt this, then yes, it ends up on our radar and we have to probably already begin okay. posturing things towards that endeavor, but at the same time, we'll be able to put it on the plate with everything else we're trying to achieve and adjust things as we need yet. Madam Chair, in yeah. my mind, in my mind, I I feel like this comprehensive planning would be spearheaded by the strategic planning committee. Like we would move from this to capital facilities. And not that we're doing all the work necessarily, but we would at least be the the person driving the bus 
Um, and the same thing on the comprehensive plan, we could be the body that is driving the bus, getting that moving forward. Um, and again, it's a fluid document. We, we might change our mind in two years and say, you know, that this is something we need to push off. And I think that's okay. Yeah, I think those are, I mean, like you guys said, it's the language is not super important. So, I mean, I guess my only suggestion would be maybe to change that statement to say also plans to complete. I know that really doesn't change it much, but it maybe lowers the tone slightly. Do you want me to Otherwise, leave county I'm board? Just leaving it. What's that? Do you want me to leave county board as written or change it I to the county? I, I honestly don't care whether it says county or county board. Um, I know, I think Steve mentioned that that county might be more, um, might represent better what it's going to take. Um, I don't know how important that is. So you want the county also plans to complete a comprehensive plan by 2024? Is that the language? You are sort of splitting hairs at this point, right? Madam Chair, um, I don't mind us being a little provocative at this point. And, and, and so I'd be fine with saying we will, but if, if you feel like plan to is, is more more realistic, I'm fine with that. I was just trying to widen this the sphere by saying pointing out to the whole county the instead county. of the county board. Okay. I'm I'm still satisfied with the will, but but I can go either way. Okay. Well then let's leave it as is is fine with me. And as far as the previous sentence, Melissa, I just want to say I, I actually really like that last sentence that you included in the first paragraph. Okay. Any tweaks to it? Did, did I capture what we were essentially? I was really tired when I wrote it, so I was like, okay, I can't think of <laughs> a better way to yeah, say it. Yeah, I so think it does. Clint, do you have any thoughts on that? I feel like it does, but perhaps you have a different opinion. I think it, the way I read it, I think it matches up with the expectations that you folks are talking about right now. So I don't see where there's any sense of confusion on it. Again, with the uh, the administrative bandwidth to have the project complete by 2024, it certainly gets added into the mix of all of our other uh, running administrative tasks that we want to accomplish as well. Um, but it, with it lining up as a strategic goal in your strategic plan, it, it carries, it obviously carries more weight. Madam Chair? Yes. While we're on this page, can we answer this question that's been sitting on the right here since the very beginning? Do we want to see strategic plans for Richland Center and other communities and can, should, would, should they be included in this document or do we just want to delete that and I can finally get rid of that comment? Can you explain what you intended by that comment or what we intended? Well, I, yeah. Right, so I think uh, I just listened to all this. So it, what, what we talked about was how important it is that um, that we have that we have knowledge of and know what the goals are of Richland Center of Viola or whoever else, whatever the other communities may have strategic plans and that. Their strategic plans may work in tandem or help inform our strategic plan. Um, so I, we're kind of late in the game now as far as like yeah. informing our strategic plan, but. I don't know, maybe they would be helpful information for supervisors and just knowing what, what the communities in our county are striving for or not, or we can just leave it out. I, I just thought, can we finally answer this question? Madam Chair? Yes, Steve. Yeah, uh, I went and looked at the Richland Center's uh, information on their website. They've, they've got their just finished comprehensive plan uh, at public, it's not actually on Officially on the website, but there's a link to look at it. It's, I don't know, about 60 pages, um, but it's more of, yeah, it's a comprehensive plan. I did not find a strategic plan that's more inward focused on city government itself. So I think it's the idea of having an addendum that, that maybe it doesn't literally have the entire text, but, but it would reference and give links or something like that to what is out there, like a comprehensive plan uh, or the ones that Troy mentioned. Just, just so if someone wants to see at this point how we fit into the big picture, they, they'll know they're out there. 
Madam Chair. Yes. Can I ask Troy, what are your thoughts on this? How how helpful and informative do you think including this kind of information would be, or do we just let it go? I think I think it'd be valuable. Um, one of the things that we do in our comprehensive plan is focus on internal issues. We used to not do so, but that I think was a fallacy on our part because again, going back to the point that you have to have capacity, capability to do what you want to do, it doesn't help to dream without thinking about how you're going to accomplish things. So, for instance, in Richmond Sun, you know, one of the big things that came out of there is the city's desire and the need for a city administrator, which they now have. So, I, I think at least scrolling through the the project lists and the goals to peel off the things that are are city government focused um, at this point. You know, those places where you're going to have to overlap. So the future land use plan of Richardson, for instance, if you're going to have new facilities, you're going to need to understand their future land use plan, those kind of things. Up, uh, myself and Matt in our office could spend some time looking at that. If you'd want us to to peel some of those things off, how it incorporates into this document, I'm not sure. Perhaps it's perhaps it's sufficient to, I don't know, twice a year coordinate with the city on where they are. We do have the intention of connecting with the city in Lone Rock and Boaz. So far, quarterly, to make sure they're moving this forward. So, um, perhaps it's a, a, a perhaps the answer is it's in in the implementation or continuum improvement process. When you get together quarterly, you also identify what the cities have done to implement some of their projects. At the very least, you don't want to be in conflict with what they're doing, and hopefully working in tandem. Obviously. I don't, I don't see a clear way how it neatly fits in this document. I will say that um, because if there's moves ahead, changes and alters and so forth, uh, that could be tricky to, to always manage. But that's why I say maybe it's worthwhile just as you go through to implement your plan quarterly, you also look at what they're doing. So I guess I would agree with Troy. That was my question was, I don't understand how we can include that into the document well i think as as steve and him said i think it's worthy so maybe it's something that we include in the work plan for us as a as a um, committee yeah that makes sense to me i'm fine with that okay so maybe um let's make a note that we'll include that for our own task um i see so okay just to kind of recap here, I think we're saying that we're okay then with the language as is in those two paragraphs. Is that correct? That was my take. Yep. Okay. So then let's move on. I see that Sean is here. Welcome, Sean. Um, why don't we move on then to looking at the um, mission and vision statements? I had mentioned at the end of the last meeting that, um, and welcome, Carrie, too. I know you've been there for a while. Um, to just kind of look over, I think we had four different options for um, mission and vision statements within the document. Um, I, don't know what, I don't know if I checked, are they all still included? Yes, they're all still included in this chapter one. So I think we were going to discuss our thoughts on that. Um, Steve or Carol, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Before we dive into that, I just had one more thing on on the uh, chapter one. The the well, the chart still looks like it still needs editing. I, I, I haven't updated it. This I is mean, still the original one. Oh, okay. I want to make been, sure we knew that. It's yeah, still no, it, it's not the final version yet. Okay. Not with yeah, all the changes. And I, I believe Cheryl has been updating that, so we'll just have to get that new one. Yeah, it just hasn't been incorporated into the document. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, yeah, we had on page four there what we had decided on, but then on the following page, we had the various options. Um, so open it up to you guys. <laughs> Any further thoughts on where or which mission and vision you felt best reflects? I think we had kind of decided, did we decide or did we say we needed to decide whether this reflected just the strategic plan or the county board as a whole? Do you guys remember? 
I feel like we, we decided that this should kind of represent our governing bodies. Mission and vision is that correct? Madam chair. Yes, Steve. That's my recollection and I've had a. Bit of change of heart since then. I'm, okay. I'm getting more. I'm getting more comfortable with the ones we chose since they, they are. <laughs> and I, they're maybe a little wordy from what I thought should be. And and I I had these you know, nice aspirational things in mind in the stuff I was bringing up. But if we're looking inward, just trying to focus on improving the you know the efficiency and function of the government itself, I don't mind what we chose. But I think that was the point. We kind of decided that maybe these were better to just reflect a little bit more broader of a statement for our county government. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. So I think what our discussion kind of hinged on was, excuse me, what or would we want to put these on our website as a Richland County's mission and vision statement without the context of people knowing that we're that our plan itself is pretty focused and I thought what we had determined is we would not want to put our, our the ones that we had chosen on the website right as our mission and vision because out of context they I, and I, I think I remember us discussing too that we felt like um, we had kind of outlined what our goals were for this document and so for a mission and vision especially if we, like you said, we're gonna put it on the website or anything, it made sense to have something that would be um, better understood and maybe a bit more aspirational even. So Madam Chair, um, yeah. maybe this is the time that Sean should jump in. So yep. we know what, what his Anytime, thoughts are. Anytime, Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm in the middle of a project, so I'm not going to turn my video on because I'm really dirty right now. Um, so, um, so I had talked to to you, Ingrid, and then I had talked to Melissa, uh, each of you separately about this. And uh, Melissa encouraged me to come today just to share it with you because I I had listened to some of y'all's discussions about the mission and vision and and um, it almost kind of sounded like it might end up coming to the county board, you know, and letting the county board decide or something like that. And and I think I was kind of discouraged from doing that. And I, so, of course, I'm happy to share my thoughts on it. But um, I just like I like something a lot more succinct, probably than than any of these. I think when when I was first involved in looking at the strategic plan before the strategic planning committee was made up, I had Googled like different mission, what's the difference between a vision and a mission? And and they had examples of different companies. Um, I don't think they had government anywhere, but they were kind of short and pithy, you know, it was like easy to remember it. It, it really described the business really well. And so when I look at ours, they just sound like kind of governmenty and politicky and you know a little just wordy and um they they do describe a lot of the values i think that we have or the things that we want to do but they just it'd be hard to like say it in a radio interview on wrco or like you all are saying put it on the website so i was just trying to think of describing to someone what the county government does which is really valuable since you know most people don't know what the county government does in richland county and um I was just thinking of a vision being something more like a rebuilt Richland County or a revitalized, you know, I'm kind of thinking I'm doing a lot of home projects. So I'm thinking like, you know, like a restored or something like that. Um, but just to get across this idea that we are making a lot of investments, we have made investments like in Pine Valley, but we, we need to catch up on all this deferred maintenance and building our tax base and, and it kind of, that's why I was thinking the vision um, should just be short and it should somehow capture that. And then with the mi mission, I was trying to think about like, what do we as a county government actually do? And so I was kind of thinking along the lines of, you know, instead of just listing all the services or even using that word services, which sounds so economical or it, you know, I don't know what that means, you know, 
until I spend time in 15 committees. But um, like if it was something like I was thinking of four different categories that kind of covers all the work that we do. So I was thinking like deliver justice, keep working people productive, protect the vulnerable and improve quality of life for all. And I was thinking of all our departments and I was trying to like, would all our departments fit into those or all of our activities? So I'm just sharing the idea. I haven't even written it down. I'm just verbally telling you what I was thinking. So thank you. Sean, can you can you say the mission one more time? I just was writing it down just so that we could talk about it. So deliver justice, keep working people. Productive. Uh -huh. Protect the vulnerable. And improve quality of life for all. Thank you. So were you literally saying, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, can I ask him a question? Um, were you literally saying that the vision statement would be a revitalized Richland County? Or a rebuilt Richland County rebuilt, or right. Right. But that I mean that concise. I like short and sweet. <laughs> yeah. I like those co other companies that had done short and sweet mission vision statements. They just they're easy to roll off the tongue. So it's just my opinion for what it's worth. I understand, you know, you, you all are in the, you know, you're in the trenches having to make recommendations. So I, you know, if you got to stick with a, a longer one, I, I totally get that. I just was encouraged to share my opinion here. So that's, that's why I'm doing it. I'm sure. You're muted. Ingrid. I'm sure. Can't hear you. You're muted. We can't hear you. Thank you. I was sorry about that. Um, Sean, I just said, I just said, thank you. And that I don't disagree um, that we need something more succinct. I, I think the thing that becomes difficult for me is, you know, we're trying to describe um, government, which is not succinct. So I think that's where a lot of our difficulties run in, right? Um, I, I mean, I like your ideas that you have here, um, your four points. This has been tough. <laughs> so I, I like these, I like your, I really like the revitalized Richland County. I like that term. I don't know if we want to go that short or not. I would have to hear. I mean, what do you, the rest of you think? Can, can I ask what Troy thinks? Yeah. Well, thanks. <clears throat> uh, I, I love the, uh, I think I love the mission piece. The county government's not terribly sexy. It's of Maslow's hierarchy. We're doing the very bottom stuff, right? This is the stuff that helps human life with the arm of the state. Um, it's incredibly honorable and noble. I think the stuff that you all do at county government. It's not terribly flashy, and yet I think Sean's words really hit home that at the end of the day, that's that's the thing. That's why you're doing all of these programs. So well done, Sean. I really, I really like that you, you made it non flashy. Uh, you really brought up the noble nature of local government. So thank you. Um, in terms of the vision, I get it and I like it. I would probably bounce it off of. Um, a business recruiter or an economic developer. If if I'm a business coming in and I'm seeing a revitalized Christian County is your is your vision, what does that say about my prospects of locating in your county? That's the only thing I'm little maybe hedging on. Um, just just my initial thoughts. Thank you, Troy. <clears throat> I think I had said last time that when I had relooked at these, the first ones that we had on those extra lists had been kind of my um, my preferences. 
I do really like the ideas that Sean includes in the mission. Um, I think that they're short and punchy statements, which I like. My only quibble is just, I probably get too detail oriented. So then I'm like, well, wait, how, you know, I want to look at those and be like, all right, so how do we do those things? Um, which is not necessarily wrong. I'm just trying to think through it. Having just seen it. I don't know. I mean, is this something that we want to keep talking about right now as a board or. I honestly, I mean, as you guys know, we've had many discussions about this. I really don't know the best way to approach this anymore. Madam Chair. Yes, Steve. Yeah. Um, maybe we work on some other parts of our agenda for today and, and come back so it's not hanging us up. Yeah. Um. Sean, you had mentioned that this you had just quickly come up with this. Is this something that you would be interested in um, trying to refine more? Did you want to look at how you wanted to state that more? Or are you do you want us to just take this and, and put it into consideration? Uh well I could um yeah, I mean I I could think about what you all just said and um I guess redraft something and just send it to you all just for just for an idea you know for for mm -hmm. you all as you think what to recommend um yeah troy's point i i think is pretty good one that it does kind of imply that things are not vital now which you know i think maybe a lot of us do feel like that but maybe that's not the face we want to put on the county um but maybe it's too negative yeah it might might be a little too negative um i would think that the how of the mission, I would think that that's a good point. And it reminded me, I think I would want to look at the mission and then look at all the different points under each of those categories and right. say, you know, so do these fit or right. so I think it merits a little more thought for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to, you know, spend 10 minutes reading through it and then just type out something, maybe, maybe another idea as well. I'm happy to if send that along. If you're willing to do that, that would be great because I think what you came up with on the fly is beautiful. <laughs> and so if you're thinking about it, I'm sure that you can come up with, with something really um, good. Yeah, and I would just say as far as like you mentioned, looking at what we had again, like, for example, also making sure that the statements that we say actually fall within the realm of our. I guess jurisdiction or I that maybe that's not the right term, but you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. When we say keep working people productive, we do want productive people in our community, right? But how do we accomplish that? You know, and is our responsibility to make sure that every private business owner is productive? Um, and I don't want to be nitpicking. I'm just thinking about how can we make these statements? I really like the fact that they're short and punchy and they have things that I think are super important, like justice protecting vulnerability, the quality of life, productivity, those are all good. I think it's just how we state them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll do some more thinking about that too. I'll, go, I'll come back to the video when I sit down and I'll be thinking about this while I'm plastering my walls. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, I really appreciate it. Thank oh yeah, Sean. thanks for thanks for listening. I appreciate the time. Sean, can you, do you have a few minutes to hang around while we go through the finance and personnel? There was a couple things on here that I, my memory might not be precise about um, what finance and personnel was looking for. He added. I do. I just need to run by two o'clock for a meeting. So. Okay. I think our next step was to go through the finance and personnel. Yeah. Minutes, is that right, Madam Chair? Correct. If Clint, if you can pull up those minutes, they should be in the folder. I can one second, Madam Chair. Thank you, Clint. And I'm debating between muting myself again and unmuting. Is there a lot of background feedback when I'm not muting myself? No, we haven't heard any background feedback at all. <laughs> I don't want to forget to unmute myself again. Well, I mean, I can get started with some of it. So. The first one is one that I'm just not sure where 
Okay, so I'll just read the first one. So moved by Linda to lobby the state concerning mandated services that are not funded, seconded by Sean Murphy Lopez. Moved by Linda Gentis, that's spelled wrong, to amend motion to explore possibilities of approaching the community to see if they support an operation operating referendum. Seconded by Sean. Uh, the motion carried three to one. So in this one, the reason that I voted no to this was that. I feel like we haven't given oh, our I'm ministry. sorry, Melissa, can I pause you just for a second? Clint, yeah. um, I think what she's reading from is the actual meeting minutes, which were the 10 B. There you go. All right. Okay. Sorry, Melissa. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sorry for the delay. So. Um, the reason that I voted a process was that I don't feel like we've given our administrator enough time to to do the job we hired him to do um, as far as looking at our efficiencies, looking to find, um, you know, if we are the most streamlined government we can be. I feel like until we've done that, I don't want to ask the taxpayers to let us increase our operating referendum. I feel like this next budget process might get us a lot closer to knowing where we're at. But I didn't feel like like this was something to put in here at this point. That was just my point of view on that. Sean, could you, you want to? Could you explain just a little bit in more detail what these two motions actually mean? So they were finance was suggesting that we put a, a something in our strategic plan saying that we will go to the community. Well, the, the I'm sorry, the first part where it says lobbying the state. Yeah, so somehow that kind of got, we amended the motion to explore possibilities of approaching the community to see if they support an operating referendum. So, so they I are two separate things. go together, I'm confused. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one is really, for, well, we can talk about them separately, so. Well, I, I Madam Chair. Yes, please. I do, th I do think that lobbying the state for, concerning mandated services that are not funded is about another way to say that is to ask for more funding to <clears throat> deal with these things that the state has placed as our responsibility. And I think related to that is the idea of that's one way to get more funding is state funding, but another way to get more funding is the property tax levy. And so I think I haven't rewatched this to, to see how the discussion went, but I think they are tied because it's about um, funding. So um, I think there's, it's oftentimes, I've heard different individual board members say yay or nay to going out for an operating referendum. So I think, I think the goal was to get it down on paper and see if it's going to get support or not to even approach the public with that. I think the issue of timing that Melissa is mentioning is a good one. You know, you want to do your other work before you do that necessarily. But I think the committee was still thinking that an operating referendum was good. Of course, there were only four people there. We barely had a quorum, but. Madam Chair. Yes, Steve. Um, do these, these two items here seem like they might fit in our work plan in terms of specific action items to study? I mean, I, I suppose they could. I guess I just want to clarify, Melissa, when, the, when it says motion carried, was the amendment then striking that previous lobbying the state or was it just including it on? It was including it. So, okay, it was for both. All right. Um, well, I want to hear what the other board members have to say. Carrie? I'm all for going and uh, mandating or going for in front of our legislature and lobbying for us. I think we have to do it ourselves to lobby for us concerning those mandated services that are not adequate for funding. Had a discussion with Sean about this in the past, and it makes a lot of sense for us to do that. But then, on the other hand, we're an arm of the legislature, so we're really our powers are given to us by the legislature. And like, if they want us to do this, then 
guess we have to do it regardless. And I think then the issue comes down to is getting the public more involved and letting them know how exactly what we are. What did we talk about before, Sean, that we needed to tell the public about how our property taxes and how the state's you know budget, how they did their thing, and they had like a two million dollar or two billion dollars left over, but and yet they're making us raise our property taxes here, in southern Wisconsin. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I I, I do. Um, and I and I do think kind of along the lines of what you're saying. This is about. I think the strategic, or the strategy here would be for the county board. Or maybe the county in general, so that would include employees to get more involved in advocating for um, additional funding to to get some of these things done. So you know we want to give employees regular wa uh, wage increases. That's I know one of the strategies in here. Well, in order to do that, you know money doesn't come out of thin air. You know, so we need more money, whether that's from the state or from local property tax. Those are kind of two different things in that way. But, but I think the the main first point was about lobbying, um, or encouraging the state government to give us more funding to accomplish some of these things. And and I think the other the other issue that you have here though is if we don't do this, we have to somehow make it understand public understand that we're razor thin on the amount of money that we have available to us. The only way that we can increase is through property tax levy. Well, when there was a, when we had that tax levy freeze back in the early 2000s, the cost of everything, inflation was down, the cost of everything back then was not as high as it is today. But we're still running on the same budget. You know, so if I owned a store right now and I sold goods for the prices that they were at, I bought stuff from a retailer to sell in my store at prices that were back in like 2000, but I never increased my price to make up for that cost because now it costs me more to buy it. This is where we're at right now. And it's harder and harder for us to do anything. And so if we don't have services and we don't offer this within like parks and stuff, people are not going to come to Richland County to want to live here, to want to support us because there's nothing here for them. If we have to start cutting funding to our parks and get rid of our parks, well, now, and because we want to do ra raises to, um, this is just an example, do raises to employees, now we have, we're giving up our parks and so now it just makes it unattractive for us. To want to even to, to bring residents here, new residents. So. Um, Madam Chair, what got got a suggestion? Um, so I, I'm wondering. So on Friday's finance and personnel agenda, there's an agenda item about state shared revenue, and I've been doing some research about kind of along the lines of what Carrie's talking about, how things haven't gone up for. Uh, according to inflation, you know, and, and we're losing that funding from them and we might be able to work out a little more specific language, um, regarding. Regarding these 2, and then forward that to strategic strategic planning. Okay, well, that would be good. I mean, because I would have to say at this point, and I would like to hear from Clint as well, but I'd have to say as far as the 2nd point, this approaching the community, I would have to agree with Melissa right now. I feel like that's. Premature and not something that I necessarily want to see put in our strategic plan. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to the 1st portion of this, um, especially if you're saying you, you think that there's. You can uh, be more specific. Clint, or yeah, Troy. I am saying I, I do think we can do that as a committee finance committee. Yeah. Um, Clint, did you want to weigh in on this? The, the 2 elements of it, some of it um, kind of is administratively driven in, in regards to like the lobbying efforts. As example, I plan on attending the Wisconsin counties association leg legislative session coming up here in February to understand. Um, more in depth of what Wisconsin counties association is lobbying on behalf of all counties, knowing that the same type of issues of 
of uh, revenue struggles on top of mandated type of services is usually front and center for concerns that get pushed up. Um, on behalf of the state, though, I mean, when we're, we're saying that we would like more shared revenue, uh, that comes from most likely a income tax or a sales tax types of source as well. So it's still, in order for us to have more expenditures, there likely has to be a um, more of a revenue gaining, uh, gaining through those types of taxing elements or reduction in spending at the state level, which may impact our other revenues, uh, shared revenues towards health and human services or towards highways or other types of plans there. So it's kind of always a treading caution of what you ask the state for, because if you lobby to, we want more money for say chapter 51's 50 placements, well, okay, they might do that, but then turn off um, profit sharing for efforts like roads and kind of still leave you with the same pie cut a different way. So we we have to kind of work a, again with, with, you know, with our, uh, our lobbying, lobbying folks to try to get ourselves in a position where we're actually arriving at where we want to, or it's changing also state statute to allow for increases in operational levy that's not associated with um, uh, with our net new construction types of formulas and those types of things. In context of the operations levy, um, yes, I would have concern with that as well uh, for the simple sake that I'm not opposed to, to, to putting it to a, a referendum, um, but as an easy, an easy counter argument that you would face as a, as a county board is, well, until we've skimmed down on our non-mandated services, uh, why are we asking to go and get more operational types of funds? Which is an argument. There's not. There's certainly many counter argument, arguments back to that of essentially the operations, you know, the referendum being a way for the community to say that they do support those non-mandated services. Um, but again, it, it's that's a question too that we are end up we have uh, in order to put a referendum through on a uh, through a an election that has to be done at a certain time of the year when our revenues are released from the department of revenues so that we can put the correct language in there and it usually then has to be done in the november election which makes a very tight window which then as a county if we want to uh, pursue that for operate uh, for a, uh, a referendum operational impact the following year we're in a position where we're going to have to draft then kind of two different budgets one effectively with a with a, a referendum going through, and one with it not going through. Other means might be to put out in a uh, in a on a ballot a, a referendum question to see if there's support on that. But then again, that thing uh, doing it that means doesn't mean that the same voters are going to turn out that answered your first question when the actual referendum comes through. So there's a lot of different consideration points there. Not opposed to any of them, but they certainly do carry uh, different exchanges of of pros and cons. Did that help at all, Madam Chair? I think that was very um, informative. Thank you. Um, to Steve's point, I, I think that this could also, particularly the part where we're looking at lobbying the state, I think there's potential to just to put that into the, the work plan. Um, how do you guys feel about waiting to, to hear back from finance and personnel on the more specific language? That seems like a good idea. Okay. Um, again, we're, yes. Madam Chair, at, at this point, we're 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 aren't we saying that the work plan is going to happen a little bit later? So we have plenty of time, or more time, I should say, to work the items that will be in it. Is that right? Um. Yes. Although I I would like to have. A working or workable work plan to present along with the strategic plan that at least ha is has some meat to it. I mean, I think we need to be, I think we need to continue moving forward. But yes, us having this ready to say present to county board doesn't mean we're not going to continue to make changes to the work plan. I think out of any of this document, that's probably going to be the most living portion of it, correct? Well, my, my point was, do we want to go ahead and capture and put it in there right now, or, or is this? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. The rest of you. I, I think, are we specifically talking about the 1st portion of this? Correct? Yeah, and, and, and as we go through the, anything else in, in their, their minutes, if we see anything else that makes sense, just capture it and, and put it in there. If we, if we think that makes sense. I have been doing that 
So the suggestions up until this meeting are already in the work plan of things that we said we wanted to add. My question for you is where does the where does this fall? They didn't specify or we didn't specify right. where this falls in the work in the strategic plan, which then guides where it would go in the work plan. So unless does we just it, have a miscellaneous category. It, does it need to be stated in the strategic plan? No, not I mean not all of our tactics are gonna necessarily be spelled out in the strategic plan. I mean that or in the work plan, I'm sorry. Um so I but on the other hand, we did say that we wanted to make sure that everything we're doing in the work plan is driven by what's in the strategic plan. So I guess my question is again, That's where true. where does this fall in our strategic plan? What cat what section of the strategic plan are we thinking this? Madam Chair. Finances? Yeah, I'm taking a look at our chapter two right now. Yes, Kara. Yeah, um, under improved financial practices, I suppose this is best a fit as I can see. Um, we would probably just have to. I know. I just, there's a part of me that's like, okay, improved financial practices, and one of our bullet points is ask the state for more money. <laughs> I mean, it's not necessarily bad, but I don't know where else it would go, I guess, is my point. Were you thinking it would be a, a sub bullet under the second? Or would it be its own bullet point? I mean, I guess if we're we're looking at grant funding in other ways, it does make sense that, you know, this is us evaluating other sources of funding income to support our programs. So I could make it as its own bullet point. Does it fit? I mean, does it? Is it already captured in what we have, though? I guess I'm not familiar enough with ling with the language of this, as as far as how it relates to lobbying. When we talk about like, for example, the last bullet point, it doesn't, I don't know if that's considered a portion, a part of that. I mean, I guess you could add it, at, like if you, that last bullet that says increased discretionary and variable revenue source as a portion of the overall budget, you could, we could just continue that, um, lobby the state to fully fund mandated services services they mandate. Well, I mean, we have in parentheses fines, fees, grants, state funding, <laughs> etc. I don't know if that's I mean so so we could put it in a state funding in a parentheses and then in the work plan add it actually flesh that out and say lobby and and who's lobbying like are, are right. I mean and that's that, where I think we need the more specifics that Sean was mentioning. Because right now okay. that's who does that? And how does that look? And, and Clint brought up some really good points. I wouldn't have thought about that. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Like you have to be careful what you're getting. Okay, so right now, just to get us going, I'm I'm adding on that last bullet point, increased discretionary and variable resource revenue source. We have evaluate fines and fees, comma grants, comma state funding, et cetera, as a portion of the overall budget. So then and then I will add a note to add in the work plan and we'll flesh this out more. I'll just add it to the bottom like I did a couple other things just so that we keep them on our radar. Um, lobby state or funding funding of mandated services. Madam Chair. Yes, Steve. Yeah. Um, Wisconsin County's administration or association just recently came out with a report showing how the, the county's budgets have has a have all been the portion that is state uh revenue has been decreasing for years and so if we do something like lobbying I, i'm assuming we would do it in some kind of coordination or at least contact with them to see what kind of strategies they've got going and and then and then we're I, less likely to step on our own foot i believe that's what clint was saying correct clint 
That's correct. Our point of contact with the Wisconsin Counties Association is usually Kyle Christensen, who Ohio handles a lot of the different legislative type of issues and bringing it forward on behalf of the association so that we're approaching as counties united versus just a Richland County. Certainly doesn't mean, though, that we can't still be working with Assemblyman Kurtz, with Senator Howard Markline, some of our local faces, though, on bringing attentions uh, to them, especially in context where both of those our representatives are on our joint finance committee of the state. Right. And they represent Richland County, yeah. And now also, I think this could encourage county board members um, and, and employees at the county, um, like Clint and, and other, uh, the highway commissioner, to, to say, you know, this is something the county board really wants. We, as a whole, we want we want our voices to be heard. And yes, of course, we do that in coordination with the counties association and and you know this is about more state funding in general, but just educating ourselves about this. Um, Jeanetta Kirkpatrick used to mention state shared revenues and how they're going down, but I've never actually seen any data on that. And so that's what we're discussing on Friday. So we'll definitely get some revised language and and um, hopefully this just helps all of us kind of be more involved in, in advocating for ourselves so that they're giving us um, a piece of the pie. I just want to make one comment. Karen. Yeah, Carrie. I I like the Wisconsin Counties Association. I, I think they do good work. Although, and I like Senator Markline and, and Selman Kurtz, but I think a lot of balls have been dropped on a lot of things for the years. And it's probably not our two um, representatives in the legislature. I just think overall, I think things have just been dropped, and I'm kind of disappointed in all that, and why it's even got to the situation that, that we're in, not here locally, but as counties as a whole. So they may be doing stuff, but I'm just not seeing it on one end. And, and Sean literally to me one night stated that, you know, he looked at what their legislative uh, tasks were, that one thing, and it was just very bland. It's, I don't know, how'd you word that, Sean? I think I just <laughs> said that it, the w, WCA's legislative agenda wasn't very, didn't seem very strong or to the point about yeah. this state funding issue. So I could I'm, I'm going to take I off. Just, so thanks. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you again. Thanks, thanks again. again Sean. Okay, That's all I have. Bye. I just wanted to go on record to say that, you know, just frustrated with it. Okay, so thank you, Carrie, and thanks, Melissa, for adding that in. Maybe we can move on to the next one. So <clears throat> the next one was just that Linda says that we, we are getting new homes, so she doesn't feel that it's a problem and that we should add broadband. Now, there is the point that we don't really talk about broadband much in our strategic plan um, at, or at all. I don't know that we mentioned it at all. So I, I do agree with the point that maybe we want to say something about broadband. Um, but I also think, and she was there when I showed her all of the information and data about how much broadband is happening in Richland County. And we are, in fact, not. It's not that it's not happening. It's just that the county's not involved in it. Right. So, um, and I'm not sure the county should be involved in it, to be quite right. honest. Um, you know, when you speak with the the co-ops that are working really hard to bring it to Richland County, they would prefer to just do their work and for us to essentially get out of their way and let it, and you know, we can help them in permitting and things like that, getting things through zoning that needs to be, but um, but otherwise they're they're doing the work and they intend to keep doing the work. So I don't know if we want to add it or not or how we want to, do you have thoughts on that? There are, there's different, um, I can speak to like uh, conversations I've had with Iowa County, uh, Grant County, Sauk County. There's different incidences where they, um, like Iowa County is getting involved with trying to run conduit underneath the Wisconsin River, as well as also trying to uh, help coordinate to ensure that there's um, like spoken wheel set up uh, to have redundancies and black fiber put in for backups and things of that nature uh, can help with it. The extent of, of Richland County to get involved in uh, something that's kind of seen more as a market type of a business um, is, is up to you folks. It really it really is how much effort you want to try to put into coordinated is is we're finding out it's hard to even like track down the information to have an idea of what the mapping looks like on where current fiber is right now. And then uh, compound that then with the nature of geography 
and investments into running uh, fibers up spurs to reach um, multiple, maybe just a few houses, it, it does become a what's a, a return on investment type of a, a mindset. Um, so it really comes down to the context on if you see it as a, a near like a, an essential service that should be provided like a utilities type of a mindset versus a commodity purchased on a market. And uh, you know, it kind of comes down to a decision of the, the board on where your, your stance and your feel is on that. Weigh that also against the other priorities and economic uh, items that we have coming up as well. So I, I don't know if that really answers, but those are some of the consideration points I would offer as, as you decide on how much weight it should carry. So, um, so I guess it, the first one would be on page eight where it's maintain investment in workforce and community development. The first tactic, it says prioritize new home construction, develop incentives of programs to attract developers using balanced approach. Um, they were, she was just saying that, that maybe we don't need to emphasize new housing. Sean made the comment that existing housing should carry as much weight as new housing. Um, but again, I'm not quite sure where that would be incorporated. Wait, never mind. Look at that. Support and invest in broadband expansion throughout the county. One, two, three, four bullet points. Okay, but we had something in there. What page are you on? I'm trying to find that. Oh, so well, it, hopefully it should be the top of page nine. Is that? It's the bottom of my page eight it's on my bottom of your page eight on mine. It should. Yeah, there we go. Support and invest in. All right, so we can ignore the broadband thing. It's in there. It's it's. Listed with, with, with the house. I have name. to say, with Clint's input, I'm wondering, are we able to do that thoroughly? That might be something. Maybe we want to say evaluate. Eval maybe we just want to say evaluate. Broadband yeah, because I broadband expansion throughout the county. It well, sounds I think pretty complicated. In, basic, in previous conversations that we've had, and some of the decision points I think we've made through like finance and personnel. And I think with this body too, as well, Madam Chair, we've talked about uh, trying to facilitate to be the uh, you know, the forum to have the conversation on it. Um, and we are moving forward now with the survey to be able to, to gather at least to try to understand what our current mapping of a picture looks like. Um, so that I mean, that helps it helps put you uh, folks in a place where you're you're going to understand at least the current situation, and then be able to decide on how proactive that you want to be and shaping um, where things are going to be prioritized potentially with with placement on upcoming fiber but a lot of it is still going to be driven then through the capacity of our our, our vendors and our contractors to be able to put materials in and have materials available and and uh, how it you know how it works into well into their business plan for a return on investment it is again as it's a, a marketable commodity so perhaps we just want to say support broadband expansion or evaluate and support? That seems, I mean, I'm okay with that. Okay. Evaluate as, and support. As you said, we don't know what the investment part would look like or if we want to, but it's in there. <laughs> so um, as far as the new home versus existing housing, I mean, okay, a couple of things. It says, prioritize new home construction. I think we've heard from our economic development board that that has been a big need in our community. I don't think we're ignoring existing properties. The second one says encourage improvement in properties to encourage improvements to existing property to increase attractiveness. I don't think we're saying let's just ignore what we have. I think we're just acknowledging that we also need new home construction because we have a bit of a housing crisis. And they also made the comment to change the word prioritize in the first bullet point from and prioritize new home construction to encourage new home construction. I don't, I don't have a problem with either one. I personally think we can leave it unless the rest of you think we need to change it. I, I don't have a strong feeling either way. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So then the next one. Um, under improved financial practices, they recommended adding a bullet point that says create an easy to read budget, which I, I think that's, I mean, I always think that's good. Anytime we can become more transparent, I think that's a good thing. Um, 
but let's go back up to. Now I need to look at where that's at again. So it'd be way it structure improved financial practice. So it's on page five, I think. So yeah, page five. Okay. Under which bullet um, point? So this also could be one of those things that gets put in the work plan. So right. You know, when we talk about in few, in improving the budget process to implement flexibility, strategic thinking, accountability, and implementation, um, we can either add narrative to the four sub bullet points that are there, or we could simply put in the in the work plan that we want an easy to read budget. That I think published. that goes in the work plan. I don't want to clutter up our strategic plan document more than it needs to be. I think that's a good thing to have, but I think it goes in the work plan personally. Okay, I will add it to the work plan right now and we'll talk about where to put it. I think I think it falls in that category pretty well. So yeah, right. others, if you have different opinions, please just speak up. Well, I voted for this one, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As Sean said to recommend adding track finances more closely. Again, do you feel like that goes in the work plan then? Yes, those would I think those would be specific things that we would that we could add in there. I, I don't think it needs its own because I think it's pretty well encompassed in what we've said in the right. financial practices section. Madam Chair. Yes, Steve. Would you like to address the next one? Well, yeah, I uh, I just remembered one of my little uh, issues under improved financial practices. I don't. Oh. No, okay. I don't know that we've mentioned um, creating a capital budget as part of our overall uh, budgeting process. Do you, I just read it. What did you, you, sorry, what did you say? Oh. Uh, adding a, a capital budget to our budgeting process and, and so looking at more long-term type things. Look at the fourth bullet point. Or the third bullet point in that improve financial practices under tactics. One, two, three. The third bullet point says develop a capital improvement plan inclusive of facilities, roads, and equipment. Is that what you mean? Well, not really. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's. I don't know if that captures the idea of of our budgeting process every year needs to have these kinds of things as an integral part of the budgeting process, and instead of what broke this year, you know, and. I, I don't know if saying, I don't know if that cap or not, but for now we can say it does. What if, what if we put in the work plan under that bullet, something more specific? Sure. Sure. Do you know good. what exactly would do you have ideas as to what that would be? Can I, can I offer Madam chair, if, if, if does yes, this touch on what you Steve, if we said develop a forecasting capital improvement plan, inclusive of facilities, roads and equipment, is that. Better capture what you had in mind, Steve. I just nodded my head. Yes. So, so say it. So instead of yeah, can you say that one more time, really yeah. loudly? I'm yep, sorry. Underneath that bullet, develop a forecasting capital improvement plan, inclusive of facilities, roads, and equipment. Should we? Can we continue this and equipment to be used in the budgeting process? Would that further clarify it, or just leave it? I I know what it means. Um, so I mean, I, at that point, what what do you think it? What you I mean, think it's under our financial practices. So I think the assumption is that that would inform our financial practices. Correct. Okay. All right. So just add the word forecasting. Right. Got it. Sounds good to me. And we already talked about the email from Dave Turk, which I think we've decided was already included in the MIS's concerns for the most part. Um, the growth thing, that's the one that I thought maybe Steve wanted to speak about because he also had. Oh, yeah, I that one. as well. I guess maybe Melissa, you want to explain it and then Steve can add his thoughts. Um. So you're talking about are we putting enough emphasis on outdoor activities, more yeah. balanced growth? That, that yeah. 
Um, yeah, so again, it would go, I suppose it would go under, I don't know what section of growth it would go under though. That's the part that, it wasn't clear to me when we were having this discussion as to, okay, we want growth, but it, where does it fit in what we currently have listed under our growth section? Um, here we have workforce growth. Possibly. So they just wanted to, so they were focusing more on like our communities outdoor services. I'm, I'm confused a little bit. Because I don't know if that's the growth we were speaking of, not that that's necessarily bad. I, I honestly don't remember exactly what, I mean, I do know that, that we talked about if I can infer, I'm, I'm thinking, and I don't remember the exact words, but if, if it was to balance more development with also um, our preservation of green spaces, preservation of trails, park, okay. that spurs the thought. I think that was part of it for sure. Um, but but the other part was I, I think that um, as an economic development, like Carrie was talking about where, you know, we, we wanted have strong park system part, you know, and really be able to market our outdoor recreation as a way to bring people to our county. I think that was what they were feeling was not captured in our document was, you know, that we really want. We have that under the marketing, but I don't know if that's, if that captures it enough. We talk about the county parks and campgrounds and recreational opportunities under the marketing part. Say one but thing. it sounds like what was that, Carrie? I just want to know if I could be recognized and say something. Yes, please. Um, I think green. I, I like green space. I just is this comment on green spaces. Um, I think we need we as a county need to try to keep all the green spaces that we have, not be in the market of selling land for development of any sort, and. I think whether we keep that green space for parks or we still have it for our own future projects that are needed. Like <clears throat> an example would be like in a few years, we may possibly need a jail. Well, where is the jail going to go? Do we have any land that the jail could sit on that we could build? Otherwise, we're going to have to spend money on buying, on purchasing land and finding land to build off of. And if we keep um, selling our land off. I just think that we just need to keep keep the green space that we have, one for parks and two for having it for our own future uses. So well, I'll say on that, I guess. Madam Chair. Yeah, Melissa. So I I think I would agree that for the first part of it that you know, as from an economic development and attraction standpoint, I think we have captured it in that third bullet point uh, of the improved county identity and marketing. So I think that part is is addressed. Um, the other part, I, I agree with what, what Carrie is saying that we, we do need to be mindful of, which hopefully is is how a capital planning capital facilities document would help us understand what our future needs are going to be. And so that would all, that those conversations would all be connected. Yes, the, the intentions is with the capital plans. It's going to help you identify your borrowing needs versus your capacity. And then hopefully it's also steering the conversation on projecting what your uh, guidance linkage is gonna be out for your operational budgets each year. Right, and and the capital facilities plan would include what what vacant green space we have available to us for expanding or and, and to help us make those decisions. I don't know if I necessarily included that in the vision going forward into this year, but it certainly can be incorporated of understanding our inventory on all of our spaces. So is what you're saying then, Melissa, because this was this had kind of been my thought, so I'm not sure if you're saying the same thing, is that maybe that that portion of it belongs in that bigger plan? 
or at least the uh, capital plan? You mean the 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 part about a green so keeping our green space, not necessarily right. as and a evaluating part, right. right what land we have, what land do we need, what do we use it for? Yeah, to me that is completely under the the, the umbrella of a capital plan, capital mm -hmm. facility because that's part of what we own. I mean, when you're looking at a capital facilities plan, it's what do you own as a county, right? And maybe that's not our emphasis this year, but it can be moving forward. In right. context of finances, certainly as an this is kind of counter counter to the act of 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 offloading it, but it certainly can be seen as an asset and a liability. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's why we've sold some properties because we thought we could get them back on the tax base by selling it for a dollar to the city, then a house might be built on there and then we start getting tax revenue from that. And so that's the balancing act of whether to keep or not keep a, a specific piece of property. So I, I don't know. I, to me, I feel like it's it, as we work on a capital facilities plan, it will be included. I think these are all conversations we'll continue to have. Um, and I think that we've, we have hit on the outdoor activity emphasis in that third bullet point of improve county identity and marketing. Yeah, I mean, unless others feel differently, I'm fine leaving what we have right now. And it's not like we can't, you know, if we get into this and we decide that it's not specific enough, though, that's why this is a fluid document and we might end up amending it. Mm -hmm. So should we move on or? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Anyone else? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. So. Like I said, we discussed that the IT needs email is really captured in MIS's comments, I believe, is what we talked about last time at the meeting. Talk about that email from Dave Turk returning IT need, concerning IT needs. Yes, I plan on bringing that forward uh, to finance and personnel as a, a piece of the capital improvements and forecasting plan is to understand all of our IT uh, needs as part of that plan as well so we can Plan accordingly, as well as next budget cycle, um, having our more of an accounting issue, but it, uh, getting our service, our MIS, our IT service pieces into its own fund, and then having our ten account kind of more towards the actual MIS wages and their pencils and pens and computers that they need to operate, and getting all of our service licensing servers tables, networks, and all that into its own fund so we can better identify uh, between the two of what is an MIS operation versus what is a countywide computer infrastructure uh, expense. So do we need to incorporate anything of what you just said into this plan or has it already, do you feel, been incorporated somewhere? I don't think you need to because I intend to, to push You're forward and do it going. unless you're telling me to stop through finance and personnel. Um, before we move on, I just want to, we didn't address end time of the meeting. Do you, does anyone, what time do people need to be out of here? Is there another meeting after this? I, I don't have anything. No, there's nothing in the room, Madam Chair. And I, am okay. here until, until I would say I, I would like to end similar to what we did last time, which is about 240 ish, I think. So. Just want to keep that in mind because we'll have to discuss our next meeting as well. Okay, so last point I think on here. Yeah, so okay, so this is the one that I had talked about briefly, but then um, it was talked about in more depth. So I did send an email. Did everyone get that email? Can you put it on the? Um, so one, I just, you know, I just did a quick web search to try to, you know, get a kind of a brief and concise definition of what what diversity, equity, and inclusion training is and why it's important. And um, so I don't know if you all had a chance to look at that. Um, I did, I was briefly because I had to prep for the meeting, but. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Steve. Uh, it sure looks like it would go under invest in education is is another bullet. I don't I don't 
question. Let's see. Right. I think some of the reasons why we were having this come back was because when we first talked about this, and and Melissa, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, some of the questions were, what exactly would that training involve? Who does it involve? And what's the cost associated with it? Um, so I think those are some of the questions. I saw your article, but I guess that, that would be some of my questions for you is maybe to describe, did you find more information out about that, et cetera? Right, okay, so uh, I'm gonna hit on the cost first. So we haven't talked about cost in any other thing that we've looked into for this strategic plan. So I don't, I don't want us to make any decisions about this based on cost. Um, so I didn't look into the cost. I don't, I think we're talking a few thousand dollars, but, um, but I, you know, I, I did not look into how much it might cost to do this. I think my I do thought, want to stop there. Cause I, I, I do think we did actually, cause we talked about that with some of the other trainings was, you know, what, what being responsible with what kind of cost would that present to the community, to the county? Would that benefit the employees and what they actually do? I think we did mention that, and we have mentioned that with some of the other things that um, if we're looking at something that would not be considered like, um, how could I say this? Like something that is absolutely essential, like we have to address it, that we need to take into consideration the cost. And one of the reasons for that was because of the things that we're facing right now with our county um, employees as far as their their salaries and et cetera. So I'm not discounting this. I'm just saying, I do think that the cost does need to come into the discussion. So what I do know is that um, one person that has, that, that does this kind of training charges $2,500 for the training. I don't know how long that is. I think it's a day thing. I, I, I didn't look into the details, but so we're talking $2,500, but it would include all of our supervisors and all of our department heads in that one training. So if you divide that up per person. Um, and is it just a one time training? Is there any other? Type it, of so there there's many options. There's also online versions of things. Um, I think the in person one, at least the, the one I. I have a, I limited experience um, only in that I've, I've spoken with several people who have done training with one particular person that they've highly recommended um, because he has, um, the reaction that I've gotten from them is that he really does a good job of um, helping you understand what, what internal biases you may have and ways, you know, ways to be aware of those and to, to be better at working with people um, and overcoming those internal biases that we all have. And, and this is not just on, you know, this is all kinds of biases, not just race, not just sexual orientation. I mean, it, it includes all of our kind of internal biases that we may struggle with and, and really helping us understand how those internal biases can affect how we interact with people in the workplace. And um, from the people that I know that have gone through this training in other counties, their comments are is that it was incredibly insightful and difficult, very difficult and uncomfortable because it makes you face these things that you don't necessarily want to admit to, um, but that it really helped open their eyes and has helped them work more effectively with people, um, be more effective leaders, and um, has helped bring a more inclusive environment to their to their departments. So that's that's the background that I know. Um, let's see. So, Carrie or Steve, um, do you guys have thoughts or questions? Madam Chair, um, yeah. I just think that that the more knowledgeable the county and the board are about our entire populace and understanding uh, the needs and the differences, it'll enable us to do things better. It's uh, it's just one more area of knowledge that we could use some help with. So I, I, like I say, I just see it as adding another bullet and all of these will have to have to uh, assess you know, what the cost is. And we don't know for sure yet, but let's at least get it in there. 
Harry? I'm good. Okay. Clint, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think that the, some of this um, may be being done at the department types of levels with different diversity trainings, making it across the board seems very appropriate and trying to ensure that our as a service delivery organization that we are uh, aware and cognizant of uh, how we interface with folks of all different types of backgrounds and ensuring that we're we're being able to connect with them in a, an appropriate manner. So I, I don't have an issue with it if it does come down to different types of, you know, if it's put in here as this is a strategic thing and a, something that is kind of a mandate to do, um, if there's budgetary type of concerns, we may have to find other types of avenues or support pieces to be able to still provide training on it um, at a lesser expense, but the appropriateness of it is, is quite obvious to me, so I'm okay with that. Okay, so I guess, um, unless Troy, did you want to weigh in on anything? I would, I would <clears throat> just echo a lot of that. I think a macro view of this whole thing, your population declined by 4% in the last decade. You're considering operational bonding for revenues with a debt service that will be static across 20 years, yet people to repay that debt will be declining. You need people to come from the outside. And oftentimes people from the outside aren't like us. So I think this is an absolute strategy to understand what these folks are, who they are, who's coming, how to attract them. Um, if you know you don't see the virtue of DEI work, um, you see the economics of the thing, I guess. And I don't mean to sound cynical about it. Um, I don't understand how you will pay the bills if your population trend continues. So those are my only thoughts. Okay. So um, yeah, I, I think I really I appreciate like the heart and the intent behind this. I think my only or one of my my quibbles was just what I stated. I my only thing when we do any of these kinds of where we're saying we're going to do this across the county for employees is the reason why I bring up the cost is because when we I just sat through a meeting with Health and Human Services. Carrie can attest to this where we 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 talked and you guys at finance and personnel will be hearing about this um, coming forward. You know, we were looking at the rate of turnover and and um, Tracy had had done a presentation on how they had done a, a staff survey. The number 1 response and correct me, Carrie, if I'm wrong, but the number 1 issue for people was um, really had to come down to compensation and where they feel like their wages fall um, on the wage scale, their benefits, the insurance, etc. People are really concerned right now about that. And when I hear so, and that, and, and it's it's really weighty, and we're seeing people leave because of that. And while I hear what you guys are saying about wanting to attract people in, and wanting to make sure that we are treating everyone um, with with fairness and seeing them each equally as valuable, regardless of their background, regardless of anything else, those are all worthy. And those are great things, and I think we do need to be concerned about that. But if we're talking about something that could potentially cost twenty five hundred dollars, I know that doesn't sound that much, but when we, if I, I just worry that if we put something like that into our plan, and that's something that's our goal for all of the employees, when we're talking about maybe we, you know, that type of money being put towards um, whether that's a wage increase or whatever it might be, I know that's not a lot going across the board. It's just that. Dollars and cents are a really big concern to people right now, and I don't want to give people the impression that we um, don't care about those things. And we're, you know, I don't know. I guess what Clint said about maybe evaluating are there ways to do this to accomplish this with, um, you know, looking at all, all, all alternatives as far as cost. And that's the reason why I bring that up, and that's why I wanted a little bit more information on the background. Um, of it as far as the cost goes. So, I mean, and again, I don't know if that's something that we would just want to put into, you know, work plan 
Do we look into that? What does that look like? You know, do we do it? I, I I was a little confused, Clint, if you were saying that that you thought department heads were already doing that, or if you think that that needed to be across the board. We've had some um, diversity training that's been offered that has been solicited out uh, through different departments. We haven't tracked it at all at a, at a county type of a level on who's received training and who has not. But I am aware of different diversity trainings that uh, are, are being offered and and that folks are partaking in them. So it is already happening to some level. Yes, yes, but it's not it's not in a um, everybody will partake in this type of a training type of a level. It's it's um, piece mailed out as opportunities come up and availabilities are there. So I don't know, I mean, where you guys want to go from there. That was some of my thoughts on it. Uh, Madam Chair, as I've said, I think we, we put it in for now and it, it, it added us another bullet there and and there'll be a reckoning for all these things at some point when we start assigning costs to them. I mean, yeah, we've mentioned cost a few times here and there, but it, we have not done it for every single thing we've talked about. And some of these have got big, big uh, dollar signs on them, but they they uh, will improve what we're doing. So I, I, you know, you're right. At some point, we may have to we may have to do some cutting, but I don't think this is quite the time. Right. I guess I, you know, when we look at immediate needs. Because we've been talking about the strategic plan, just focusing really on. I'm not trying to to discount this. I'm just saying I think we will have to have these kinds of discussions. I don't know. I I guess we haven't even really talked about when and where does that happen when we start putting these things into the work plan. When do we have those kinds of discussions? You know, when it's something mandated versus non mandated, for example. I mean, all of those things. I would hope that we're going to have similar discussions with other things that have money uh, attached to them because we have to be responsible to um, the county employees that we have. We we know that that's a problem. We know that we're, we're trying to get wages to where they need to be and that we're having, we're struggling to retain and recruit staff. I mean, that's not just the health and human services, but they're really feeling it as well. So question, would we, are we talking about including it under the deep and staff training and leadership and management and also under the county board, thinking that it would be a group activity that would encompass both groups at the same time. Um, so it would be, but it would be two separate bullet points uh, just because one is one section specifically talks about leadership, although leadership and management, I guess, could, I, in my mind, when I see the deep and staff training and leadership and management, I'm thinking department heads for the most part. I mean, are you thinking that this needs to be specifically stated in the strategic plan or I mean, most of these things we've been just including as more tactics under the work plan, especially if we're just going to be um, looking into what our options are. Well, like the WCA training and that, that, I mean, that's got its own, when we go, you know, if you look under the um, county board training, we did specifically talk about fund and encourage supervisors. Yeah, we said fund and encourage supervisors attendance at Biennial Counties Association training and the county officials training. So we, we did get specific there. Yeah, we did have a lot of discussion about whether or not, you know, are we, how are we covering that? I know we said that for first time county board members, that's covered, correct? Right. So I don't know, I guess personally, I would say if, until we decide how we're going to do this, I don't know that I'd wanna include it in the um, strategic plan. I'm, I'm not opposed to us investigate, like looking at it in the work plan. 
Madam Chair. I think, I think that it would already be somewhat captured in what we've been talking about training under both of the sections. Madam Chair. Yes. I, I'm not afraid to add bullets. Um, I don't see a problem with adding in each place, but I, this does bring up something else we need to be talking about. Right now, our work plan has three tabs, one for strategic priorities, one for operations, one for capital facilities, but we may want to add one more tab, which is the actual strategic plan execution timeline, where we... You're, I'm we sorry, make, just to clarify, you're on the actual work plan itself? Yes. Okay, and can you say that again? What did you say? Um, right now, our work plan is three tabs, and they're they all each one corresponds to one of the chapters in the work plan. But we need a, a another tab, the work plan for the work plan, where we we <laughs> assign where we do things like assess cost, or we we assign tasks to specific departments or people, all, all the nuts and bolts of making this happen. And it needs to be captured somewhere. I'm thinking in this same worksheet or workbook, but just with its own tab. Well, part of that is captured because it says responsible party is a, it's just not entered in our work plan yet. We don't, we haven't assigned responsibility, but I agree with what you're saying. I feel like us as a committee, we may need some sort of, plan on how we're going to get this implemented, how we're going to hand this off to who we're going to hand it off to and how that's all going to go. Right. And, and just the example just came up about uh, roughing out costs. You know, mm -hmm. if that's a thing we think we need to do, then it's not really captured in, in any of the stuff here. There may be some other things we're not even thinking about right now that, that aren't really part of the, the plan, but they're part of us executing it. So, all right, I'm just looking at my time and we're getting close to needing to wrap up here. So I think we need to look, we obviously are gonna be working on this work plan next time. Um, personally for now, do you mind if we just, uh, sorry, I'm looking to find your picture on the screen and you're not there. Melissa, can we um, maybe put that as a note for now so that we don't forget? um in the work plan of course yep okay and then um as far as what you're saying steve i think that's something we can start maybe hashing out at the next because I, I agree with both of you we gotta i kind of liked how you said that a work plan for the work plan because we're going to need to remember all the different things we have to assess while we're going through this so maybe have some more thoughts on that when you come back next time um we'll review this more so i would if you guys don't mind i'd like to look at scheduling the next meeting um so i, I spoke with uh bob frank which officially will officially welcome bob frank hopefully the next meeting to our board or our committee he did say though that next week he's gone um I know we we only met a week apart this last time. I'm kind of feeling the crunch here. So part of me wants to go in another week, but I also would like him to be included. So um, do you guys have thoughts? Let's see, what day are we on right now? We're on the 19th. What about the 2nd of February? I'm good at this same time. 2nd of February, don't you have finance and personnel? But that's on no. Tuesday on the 1st. No, I'm sorry. I'm thinking it was Tuesday. So, 1st Wednesday, what does that have on it, Clint? It is currently open on my schedule. Let me check the county board room, board of adjust. No, it is open. It is open. Okay. I'm available. The room is open. Steve, are you available by chance? I don't know if you know that far out into the... I would be available that day. Oh, Carrie. Carrie, is that a work day for you? Are you going to be in between shifts? I don't know, probably. I haven't looked at it far in advance in my... Did, did you say Wednesdays were your day off, though? Yeah. Okay, so that is a Wednesday. Does that okay. Should that work for you? 
Yep. Okay, perfect. And Steve? Yes, good. Okay. Um, Troy, how's that date looking for you? Wednesday the second. I've got uh, I've got presentations at Southwest Tech. They've got a business and industry type summit from two to six. Um, but I could look at stuff in advance or, or dial in to, with someone afterwards if, if I'm needed. Okay. That's probably is that probably the only pre day that we have that week, correct? Because I think the others we've got scheduled monthly meetings. I mean, Monday the 31st would be the only other one because that's the last day of the month. I mean, I'm fine with sticking with Wednesday, but I didn't know if Monday is an option. Monday's okay with me. The Monday 31st is open for me also. Is open, uh, let me check that. Uh, Monday looks like it would work as well. The 31st uh, coordinate it uh, with both dates to make sure we have MIS support. We're going to do it via WebEx as well. I'm sorry, what was that last part? MIS what? I'll, I'll have to coordinate with uh, Director Scott just okay. to make sure that we have MIS support for both of those. Okay, well, uh, I, I mean, one. Carrie, I kind of want to put a priority on you though. So, I mean, if you're going to be in between work, you probably don't have any idea about that. What's going on? If we if we did Monday the 31st, do you have any idea about your work schedule? Would that one work for you? Um, 31st. So this weekend's the 22nd, right? Correct. For work, don't work. So the 30, yeah, I don't work on that Monday. Okay. Well, maybe every we other just... weekend off. Okay. Troy, is that a better date? Yeah, I'm wide open that day. Okay. Everybody okay with Monday the 31st? Yep. All right. Same time, 1 p.m. Do we want to consider just doing it all virtually instead of making MIS have to do this hybrid? Um, I normally don't. I mean, I'm fine attending the boardroom. I know it was, I know Steve kind of preferred that. I just today didn't join because of I've um, been sick, so I didn't want to expose anybody to anything. Um, so I'm I'm okay either way. Steve, what do you what do you think? Well like you say, I prefer in person, but if if it uh, makes more sense and it's more complicated to do in person, I I'll do I'll do remote. Um, Does <laughs> MIS have an opinion back there? Sorry, what were you saying? It, that'll be two and a half less hours of, of one extra person to help facilitate. So that that's the exchange on it. Uh, so it's it's your it's your call, Madam Chair. Uh, can you say that again? I'm sorry. It, to, to interface, um, we have MIS support that sits in with the meeting. So if we do it all remotely. Um, then it's they can usually do it right from their workstations across the road where they can just kind of monitor it, still stay in their workstations. Um, over here with interfacing the, and making sure that the microphones and the owl and the projector and everything's going, it kind of just it's a, a little bit bigger distractor, but it's it's your call on how you'd like to conduct the meeting. You can make it okay. most likely happen in both uh, venues, but it is at a, a convenience administratively to do it all WebEx. Okay. Um, Steve, the last time that we did all virtual, how did that go? Uh, it works okay. It, it technically it works. Um, so I'm fine with doing it that way. Okay. Well, why don't we, we can try it the next time and I can check back in with people after that. So that's fine with me to do it virtually. Um, 1 PM then on Monday, the 31st. Okay. So I guess that takes us then. Oh, future agenda items. I mean, we're, I think we've got everything on there um, that we need. Maybe I know we're kind of putting a pin in on the mission and vision statement. Um, we'll see what Sean gets back to us on that. Um, but yeah, I don't see 
Does anybody have anything they want to tweak or add or adjust for next time? Move that we adjourn to the 31st. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Troy, for coming. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you, Clint.